everyone, and welcome back to Las Vegas. I've got my jazz hands because I am very jazzed to be here at AWS reInvent, live from the show floor all week. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined with the infamous John Furrier. John, how are you feeling? After feeling you? great, love what's going on here. The vibe is of cloud, cloud native. A lot of security conversation, data, stuff we love. Cloud yeah. native. M-I-A-L. I mean, big Wait, new security, security data I lake. I mean, you. who would have thought Amazon would have a security data lake? You know, EKS I mean, you might have with that tweet I you mean, had out. Inside, outside the containers. Reminds me, it feels like KubeCon here. It, honestly, and there's a lot of uh, overlap, and it's interesting that you mention KubeCon because we talked to the next company when we were in Detroit just a couple weeks ago, Teleport. Ev is the CEO and founder. Ev, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me today. We feel very lucky to have you. We hosted Drew, who works on the product marketing side of Teleport. Yep. We got to talk caddies and golf last time on the show. <laughs> we'll talk about some of your hobbies a little bit later, but just in case someone's tuning in, unfamiliar with Teleport, you're all about identity, give us a little bit of a pitch. A little bit of our pitch. Uh, Teleport is the first identity native infrastructure access platform. It's used by engineers and it's used by machines. So notice that I've uh, used very specific choice of words. First, identity native. What does it mean? Identity native basically consists of three things. And we're writing a book about those, but I'll let you know. Stay tuned on that Exactly, yes. but I can talk about them today. So the first component of identity native access is moving away from secrets towards true identity. The secrets, I mean things like uh, passwords, private keys, browser cookies, session tokens, API keys, all of these things are secrets and they make you vulnerable. The point is, as you scale, it's absolutely impossible to protect all of the secrets because they keep growing and multiplying, so the probability of you getting hacked over time is high. So you need to get rid of secrets altogether. So that's the first thing that we do. We use something called true identity. It's a combination of uh, your biometrics, as well as uh, identity of your machines. That's TPMs, HSMs, uh, YubiKeys, and so on and so forth. Good. The second component is zero trust. Like Teleport is built uh, to uh, not trust the network. So every a resource inside of your data center automatically uh, gets configured as if there is no perimeter. It, it's as safe as it was on the public network. So that's the second thing. Don't trust the network. And the third one is that we keep access policy in one place. So Kubernetes clusters, databases, a stage, RDP, all of these protocols, the access policy will be in one place. That's identity. Okay, so I'm, I'm a hacker. Pretend I'm a hacker. That, Easy. That sounds, okay. that sounds really good to me. You're not supposed me. to tell one them you're okay. I can go to one place and hack that? I get this question a lot. The thing is, you want centralization when it comes to security. Think about your house being your AWS account, okay? Everything inside, your furniture, your valuable, like your watch collection, uh, like that's your data, that's your servers, Kubernetes clusters, so on and so forth. All right, now I have a choice. And your house is in a really bad neighborhood, okay? That's the bad internet. <laughs> do you want to have 20 different doors or do you want to have one, but like amazing one? Uh, extremely secure, very modern, so it's very easy for you to actually maintain it and enforce policy. So the answer is, oh, you probably need to have yeah, yeah. one. So you're designing security identity from a perspective of what's best for the security posture. Exactly. Sounds like, okay, so now that's not against the conventional wisdom of the perimeter's dead, the, the cloud's everywhere. So in a way, it kind of brings perimeter concepts into the posture. Because you know the old model of the firewall, the moat, it, yeah, it just doesn't scale. It doesn't scale. You guys bring a different solution. How do you fit into the new perimeter's dead cloud paradigm? So the, the way it works that if, you, if you're using Teleport to access your infrastructure, let's just use, for example, yeah. like a server access perspective. Like that machine that you're accessing doesn't listen on the network if it runs on Teleport. So instead, Teleport creates this uh, trusted outbound funnels to the proxy. So essentially, you are managing uh, devices using out going connection. It's kind of like how your phone runs. Like yeah. your phone is actually ultimate. It's like a teleport. Like, like iPhone. It's like teleporting into your environment. <laughs> yeah. Well played, John, well played. <laughs> think about, like actually like one example of an amazing company that's true zero trust that we're all familiar with would be Apple. Because every time you get a new uh, iOS on your uh, phone, the, how is it different from Apple running massive software deployment into enormous cloud with billions of servers sprinkle all over the world without perimeter. 
How is it possible? That's exactly the kind of technology yeah. that teleports gives I'm you. glad you clarified. I really wanted to get that out on the table, because Savannah, this is, this is the paradigm shift around what an environment is. Exactly. The, the Apple example. So okay, tell them about customer traction. Are people like getting it right away? Are their teams ready? Are they go, oh my God, this is great? Pretty much. <laughs> you see, we kind of got lucky. Like in, this, in, a, like in this business, and I'm yeah. walking around looking at yeah. all these successful startups, like every single one of them has a story about yeah. launching the right thing at just the right like, moment. Like in technology, like the window to launch something is extremely short, like months. I'm literally talking months. So we built Teleport, started to work on it in like 2015. It was an internal project, uh, believe it or not. Okay. Also a famous example, like mm -hmm. it's really popular, like internal project, put it on GitHub, and it sat there relatively unnoticed for a while, and then it just like took off around 2000. Because people started to feel the pain, they needed exactly. it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, the timing, well, and, and what a great way to figure out when the timing is right. When you do something like that, put it on GitHub. Yeah. The it's people will like tell you what's up. Yeah. Like a basketball player who can just like, be suspended in the air over the hoop for like <laughs> half the game and then finally scores and wins the game. Or a video like, gamer who's lagging, yeah. everyone else is lagging and they got the latency exactly, ping, exactly. ping error. Okay, talk about the engineering side, because I, I like this at KubeCon. You mentioned it at the opening of this segment that you guys are for engineers, not IT business people. That's right. Explain that's that, this is super important. Explain why and why that's resonating. So, there is this big ongoing shift on more and more responsibilities going to engineers. Like remember back in the day, before we even had clouds, you had people actually racking servers, sticking cables into them, cutting their uh, fingers, like trying to get them in. Uh, so those were not engineers, they were different teams. Yeah. And then you had system administrators who would maintain these machines for you. Now all of these things are done with code. Mm -hmm. And when these things are done with code and with APIs, that shifts to engineers. That is what Teleport does with policy. So if you want to have a set of rules that govern who or what and when, under what circumstances, can access what data, like on Kubernetes, on databases, on, on servers. Wouldn't it be nice to use code for it, so then you could use like a version control and you can like keep track of changes. That's what Teleport enables. Traditionally, IT preferred more kind of clicky uh, graphical things, like clicking buttons and so it's just a different world, different way of doing it. So essentially, if you want security as code, that's what Teleport provides. And naturally, this language resonates with this persona. With Love that security as code I angle. I know, it's a great term, yeah. Love it. I want to I want to. Okay, we coined it. We're, if someone I, else uses it on this show, we borrow tell them not it to use it. Okay, but, but when, did you, when did you coin that, just now? No. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think I coined it before you. wanted it you. to be a scoop, I no, love like, that. I, no. I wish I had this story when I, like, I was like a, <laughs> like a poor little 14 year old kid who was dreaming about security as code, but. Well, Dave, Dave Vellante will testify that I coined data as code before anyone else, like it got, 10 it got, years ago. You didn't hear this morning, Jimmy oh, actually brought it back up. AWS was here talking startups uh, and he like said data as whoever code. Whoever came up with Lisp programming language that had this concept that data and code are the exact same thing. I, all right, I, we could debate nerd okay. lexicon all day on theCUBE. In fact, that could even be a segment. <laughs> first of all, that we first do all the time. fact that Lisp came up on theCUBE is actually a, a milestone because Lisp is a very popular language for object-oriented. Grand, grandfather of everything. Yes, yeah. yes, grandfather. Good, good, good catch there, Ed. well done. All right. I'm going to bring us back. I want to ask you a question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just okay, we're not a nerd. This Lisp is, is no, really no, I big. I think it's great. You know how nerdy we can get here, though. I mean, we okay. can just hang out in the weeds the whole time. All right, I want to ask you a question that I asked Drew when we were in Detroit, just because I think for some folks, especially the audience, they may not have as succinct of a definition as y'all do. How do you define identity? Oh, that's a great question. So identity as a term was a uh, it was always used for security purposes, but most people probably use identity in the context of single sign-on, SSO. Meaning that if your company uses identity for access, which instead of having each application have an account for you, like a data entry with your first name, last name, emails, and your role, you yeah. instead have a central database, let's say Okta or something like that. Yep. And then you, you use that to access everything. That's kind of identity-based access because there is a single source of identity. What we say is that we, that needs to be extended because it's it no longer I enough because that identity can be stolen. So if someone gets access to your Okta account using your credentials, then they can become you. So in order for identity to be attached to you and become your true identity, you have to rely on physical world objects. That's biometrics, your 
uh, facial uh, mm -hmm. fingerprint, like your facial print, your fingerprints, as well as uh, biometric of your machine. Like your laptops have yeah. PPM modules on it. They're absolutely unique. They cannot be cloned, st stolen. So that is your identity as well. So if you combine whatever is in Okta with the uh, microchip in this laptop and you, with your finger, that collectively is your true identity which cannot be stolen. So it cannot be hacked. And someone can take my finger like they did in the movies. So they would have to do that, and they would also have to <laughs> steal have to, your mask. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And they'd have to have your eyes. And they have to, and you have, or your, and, whatever. And your yeah, if they think of that far, they might yeah, yeah, have what they want. So that is what true identity is from telephone. And, and biometric, I mean, it's, we're so there right now, it's, it's, it's really not an issue. It's only getting faster and better yeah. time to market. But there is one important thing I said earlier that I want to go back to, that I yeah. said that uh, teleport is not just for engineers, it's also for machines. Because machines, they also need identity. So when we talk about access silos, and that there are many different doors into your apartment, there are many different ways to access your data. So on the infrastructure side, machines are doing more and more. Mm -hmm. So we're offloading more and more tasks to them. That's a but really what good do point. machines use to access each other? Biometrics. They use API keys, they yeah. use private keys, they use basically passwords. Yeah. Like they're secrets. Uh, we already know that that's bad, right? Yeah. So, how do you extend biometrics to machines? So, this is why AWS offers cloud uh, HSM service. HSM is secure hardware security module. That's a unique private key for the machine that is not accessible by anyone. And Teleport uses that to give identities to machines. Does, so, do customers have to enable that themselves or they have that part of AWS Amazon? The, so that, that it's, uh, it's available key. on AWS. It's available actually in good old, like old bare metal machines. They have HSMs on them on the motherboard. And it's optional, by the way. Teleport can work even if you don't have that capability. But the point is that we try to- You have a biometric it. equivalent for the machines with we that We take secret. advantage of it, yeah. It's a hardware thing that you have to have, and yeah. we all have it. <laughs> Amazon sells it, mm -hmm. AWS sells it to us. Yeah. Um, and Teleport allows you to leverage that to enhance security of your infrastructure. It's that classic hardware software play, John, that we're always talking about here on theCUBE. It's all, it's all important. I think this is really fascinating though. So I had an, uh, on the way to the show, I just enrolled in Clear and I had used a different email. I enrolled for the second time and my eyes wouldn't let me have two accounts. <laughs> and this was the first time I had tried to sort of hack my own digital identity and the girl, I think she was humoring me that was, was kindly helping me, the Clear employee, but I think she could tell I was trying to mess with it and I wanted to see what would happen. I wanted to see if I could have two different accounts linked to my biometric data and I couldn't. It, it picked it up right away. That's your true identity. Yeah, yeah my true identity. So, and uh, forgive me because this is kind of just a personal question and it might be a little bit finger, finger to the wind, but how, just how much more secure, if you could, if you could give us a, a rating or a percentage or a, a number, how much more secure is leveraging biometric data for identity than the secrets we've been using historically? Look, I could uh, play this game with you and I can answer like infinitely more secure. Right. Like, but you know how security works that um, it all depends on implementation. So let's say you, you can deploy Teleport, you can put us on your infrastructure, but if you're running, let's say, like a compromised old a uh, copy of WordPress that has vulnerability, you're going to get uh, hacked through that angle. But... Happens, happens to my personal <laughs> website all the time. You just <laughs> touched, uh, yeah. <laughs> but the fact is that uh, we, I, I don't see how your credentials will be stolen in this system, simply because your TPM on your laptop and your fingerprint, they cannot be downloaded. They, like a lot of people actually ask us the, a slightly different question, it's almost the opposite of it. Like, how can I trust you with my biometrics? When I use my fingerprint, like, that's my information. I don't want the company I work at to get my fingerprint. People, I think it's a legit question to ask. Yeah, it is the a legit question. The answer to that question is your fingerprint doesn't really leave your laptop. Teleport doesn't see your fingerprint. What right. happens is when your fingerprint gets validated, it's, uh, it's your laptop is matching what's on the TPM. Basically, Apple does it. And then Apple simply tells Teleport, yep, that's Ev or whoever. And that's what we're really using. So when you're using this form of authentication, you're not sharing your biometric with the company you right. work at. It's a machine to human confirmation it's, first. It's, and it's, then it's basically you and the laptop agreeing yeah. that my fingerprint matches your TPM. And uh, if your laptop agrees, it's basically hardware does validation. Mm -hmm. So, so then Teleport simply gets that signal. So Ev, my final question for you is, here at the show, KubeCon, great conversations there for your company. What's your conversations here like at reInvent? 
Are you meeting with Amazon people, customers? What are some of the conversations? Because this is a much broader, I mean, it's still technical, yep. but yep. You know, a lot of business kind of discussions, architectural refactoring of uh, organizations. What are some of the things that you're talking about here with Teleport? What a, so I will mention maybe two trends I observed. Like the first one is not even security related. It's basically how, um, like as the cloud becomes more mature, people now actually, like different organizations, develop their own internal uh, ways of doing cloud properly, and they're not the same. Because when cloud was earlier, like there were these like best practices that everyone was trying to follow, and there was, like there was just a, maybe a lack of expertise in the world, and, uh, and now we're finding that different organizations just do things completely different. Like one, like for example, yeah. like some companies love having handful, ideally just one enormous Kubernetes cluster with a bunch of applications on it. And the other companies, they create Kubernetes clusters for different workloads, and it's just like all over the map. And both of them are believed that they're doing it properly. Great example so of bringing kind of, in Kubernetes with the complexity and That's kind of yeah. one uh, trend I'm noticing. And the second one is security related is that everyone is struggling with the access silos. Is that ideally every organization is dreaming about a day where they have like one place, which is uh, which has, with great user experience, that simply spells out, this is what policy is to access this particular data. And it gets automatically enforced by every single cloud provider, but every single application, but every single protocol, but every single resource. But we don't have that, unfortunately. Yeah. Teleport is slowly becoming that, of course. Excuse me for plugging Teleport. No, no worries. But it's yeah, just yeah. this ongoing uh, theme that everyone is it can't wait to have that single source of truth for accessing their data. The second person to say single source of truth on this stage in the last 24 hours. Or nerds, we love that. I know, I feel yeah. like, <laughs> well, it, but it's all, it, it, it all comes back to that. I keep using this tab Versus analogy, this. but we all want everything in one place. We don't want to, we don't want to have to be going all over the place and to look yeah. for both Because if it's a multiple basis, it means that different teams are responsible for it. Yeah. So it becomes this kind of internal information silo as well. So you are not even. And the risks and liabilities there and yeah, depending yeah, on who's yeah, overseeing yeah. everything. That's awesome. All right, so we have a new challenge on theCUBE specific to this show. Think of this as your 30 minute, or 30 minute, that would be bold, 30 second sizzle reel, Instagram highlight. What is your hot take, most important thing, biggest theme of the show this year? This year. Okay, <laughs> so here's my thing. Like, I want cloud to become something I want it to be. And every time I come here and I'm like, are we closer, are we closer? So here's what I want. I want all cloud providers, collectively, to kind of merge. So then when we use them, it feels like we are programming one giant machine. Kind of like in the Matrix, right, mm -hmm. the movie? Mm -hmm. So like I want cloud to feel like a computer. Like to have this almost intimate experience you have with your laptop. Like you can like like do this and the laptop do, like performs the instructions. So and it feels to me that we are getting closer. So like yeah. walking around here and seeing how everything works now, like on a single sign on, on the, from a security perspective, yeah. there is, uh, so that consolidation is finally happening. So It's the like, software mainframe, we used to call it back in 2010. Yeah, yeah, just kind of planetary scale thing. Yes. Uh, it's not the Zuckerberg that uh, who's building Metaverse, it's people here yeah. at reInvent. Yeah. So. Unlimited resource for exactly. developers, just call in. Yeah, yeah. Give me some resource, spin me up some, some compute. I would like alter that slightly, I would just basically go and do this, and you shouldn't even worry about how it gets done. Just put instructions into this planetary mainframe, and mainframe will go and figure this out. Okay, so we got to take the blue or, blue or red pill. I know, <laughs> I was just going to say, y'all, we are. This, 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 this segment is lit. Okay, I, we got I, Matrix, I, we got, really we didn't get SuperCloud in here, but we, we can should weave that in. We got I mean, Lisp, you just said it, so. We got Lisp. Oh, great, con great conversation, cloud native. Outstanding conversation. Ev, thank you so much for being here. We love having Teleport on the show, obviously. We hope to see you back yeah. again soon. And, and Drew as well. And thank all of you for tuning in this afternoon, live from Las Vegas, Nevada, where we are hanging out at AWS reInvent. With John Furrier, I'm Savannah Peterson. This is theCUBE. We are the source for high-tech coverage.